I don't think there's a plane which has received more negativity in the last 10 to 20 years more than the A380, and that's quite a shame. Of course, each aircraft has its own positives and negatives, and what it can bring to the table largely depends on the research and development that the manufacturer has conducted. Now, the release of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner was a commercial disaster, and the Boeing company was plagued with issues. But fast forward to 2018, and it's now considered a success. Now, is the A380 following the same path as the Dreamliner? In 10 to 20 years, will the plane come back into fashion? There are many people who consider this to be the case. Now, in order to truly appreciate the A380, we need to silence the anti Airbus fans for just a moment and look at the plane with an open mind. If you've ever been fortunate to look at the plane with your own eyes, then you'll realize that the plane is massive. Looking at pictures won't give you a sense of appreciation for the sheer magnitude of the A380. It can only fly to major international airports, and believe me when I say that people will flock in bunches to see the plane. And that's exactly what it was designed for, to attract people and accommodate demand. This is one of the PR instruments that airlines use to gain more customers, and in the case of Emirates, it actually works. But in order to welcome the plane to your airport, you need to have the proper infrastructure. Many governing bodies can't afford to spend huge amounts of money on airport upgrades just to accommodate one type of plane. This affects the runway access of the A380 compared to the Boeing 747 for example. Now, not every airline will have an A380, but the airlines who do have the plane, it serves as a huge bonus, if only you can fill the plane. It's designed to carry a large volume of passengers, allowing the airline to fly more people to a destination in a single flight compared to multiple flights throughout the day. Now, this saves on fuel and all of the other expenses attached to operating the aircraft. However, not every airline can do this. Some airlines operate a very robust schedule, which means that they prefer frequency over size. This allows their customers to choose which flight they prefer due to the frequency making it very convenient. But that's not what the plane was designed for. It was designed for high density long haul travel. Comparing the operations of Southwest Airlines to Emirates will of course give you a totally different answer. In order to truly understand the degree of its success, we need to look at examples of the plane performing at its best. And the best examples of the A380 operations has to do with Emirates. Now, the business strategy of Emirates involves flying a large amount of people to Dubai, then flying them to various destinations around the world. According to Tim Clark, the A380 allows them to get ahead of congestion issues at major airports around the world. With infrastructure struggling to keep up with demand for landing slots and airport gates, the A380 allows the airline to increase passenger volume with fewer aircraft and fewer flights. While other airlines operating the A380 have struggled to fill the plane to the brim, Emirates doesn't seem to have this issue. Now, although the plane can't be operated at each and every destination, there is demand to pull off the A380. Another fine example is the Dubai to London Heathrow route. Emirates operates six A380 flights and they're also filled to the brim. Now, the A380 is an engineering success, but unfortunately, it's a commercial disaster. The cost of development is set to be in the range of $30 billion, and it's still believed that Airbus haven't hit the break-even point just yet. Also, due to the production rate being decreased, Airbus are losing money on a cash basis for each plane sold. The cost of keeping the A380 production line going for just one main customer, Emirates, is almost certainly more than what the plane is gaining in revenue right now. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the plane in terms of engineering or design. It was just the wrong plane for the wrong time. If the A380 had been introduced 20 years earlier, it would have proven to be more of a success than it is now. But unfortunately, the days of four engine planes are now over. When you can put 350 plus seats on the A350, there's just no way the A380 can compete with that in terms of fuel and also expenses. Even if the A380 is filled to the brim, it still doesn't compete with the economics of the latest planes and most of the time the A380 doesn't fly full. But it must be understood that success in the airline industry or in anything else doesn't mean being available everywhere for everyone to see. Success can also be creating something that changes the industry and the way the people think. So the A380 is a success in its own right because it created a niche market for plane manufacturers. 
It may never compete on the level of the Boeing 747, but remember the A380 will always be the first real super jumbo. So there you go captains, I wanted to make a tribute video for the A380 in a sense, because it's done a lot of good in the industry, and it gets unnecessary hate when it really shouldn't. Now if you've ever flown on the plane, then by all means do share your memories with us in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.